Got another set of questions for the alkenes and addition polymers playlist, and as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So I've drawn up an ethene molecule and shown all the sigma and pi bonds. So you can see in the carbon carbon double bond, we've got one sigma and one pi bond. So it was option A. Moving on to the next part, you'll see I've put all the information up for those three key terms. Unsaturated means the substance contains a carbon carbon double, carbon carbon triple, or a benzene ring. An allocyclic compound is a ring, but it's not an aromatic ring, so it can contain benzene. And the alkyl group has the general formula CnH2n plus 1. So which one of those satisfies all of that? So the answer is C, and that's because we've got a carbon-carbon double bond, so it's unsaturated. It's a ring, but it's not an aromatic ring, it's not a benzene ring, so it is allocyclic. And it does have this alkyl group, this is a CH3 group, a methyl group, so it satisfies all three, whereas the other ones fall down on at least one of them. The next one's just testing your knowledge of um, the definition for electrophile. So an electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. So the answer was A. So to help with the last multiple choice one, you'll see I've put some square brackets around the repeat unit of this polymer. So I'll draw the monomer now from that. So there's the displayed formula. There's the structural formula. So you can see it matches with option C. So moving on to the flow chart now, you'll notice I've drawn up the skeletal formula for hex 1 in just to help explain this. So reaction 1, reactant with hydrogen, so we're just going to break that double bond and turn that into an alkane essentially. So the product is hexane. Moving on to reaction 2 now, so we're going to react this with HCl. So I'll draw both of the carbocations up in this space here. So in this top one here, I've put the hydrogen there, so that carbon at the end has a positive charge. And on the other one, I've put the new hydrogen here, which means that carbon's got a positive charge. So this top one is a primary carbocation intermediate, because the carbon with the positive charge is just bonded to one carbon directly, whereas this one's a secondary carbocation intermediate, because the carbon with the plus on is bonded to two carbons directly. This one's more stable, which means that's going to be the major product. And for the third one, we're just putting the bromines across the double bond, and we're going to get that. Catalyst needed for reaction one, that's the hydrogenation reaction, is a nickel catalyst. And reaction three, what would we observe in this reaction with bromine with the alkene? We're going to see the bromine lose its orange colour, so I would just write the bromines decolorised. Not the part B, so it's a practical skills question, this one. So we've got this synthesis of hex um, one -ene from hex and one -ol. So we've got to work out the mass of hexane one all needed to make 4.2 grams of hex one in, but we have to factor in the yields only 62.5%. First thing we'll do is work out how many moles of hex one is needed. So it's mass over MR, so it's 0.05 moles. To get the moles of hexane one all we're going to need, we need to scale up to factor in the 62.5% um, yield. So the way I do that is divide the moles by the yield and multiply up by 100 and that gives 0.08 moles of hexane one all needed. All we need to do now is turn that into grams. So that's just moles times MR, 8.16 grams. Move on to the purification stage. So after reflux, we're told that the mixture contains hex one in and hexane one all and water. So you'll notice I've got these two layers here. The upper layer is going to be the hex one in because it has the lower density the alcohol and the water are kind of going to merge together in this higher density lower layer. So the first thing we'll do is put that into a separating funnel. We then allow the layers to separate. Remember it's the upper layer that we want because the hex one has the lower density. So we need to collect the upper hex one layer. Now there's very likely to be small traces of water in that layer. So we need to now add a drying agent. The example I always use is anhydrous calcium chloride. You then need to filter that to separate out the hex one in from the drying agent. And then you need to distill the liquid that's left and collect the fraction that boils at 63 degrees C. So that's the boiling point of hex one in. 
The next part of the question, so how would the yield of hex 1 in compare if you try and make it from hex and 2 all? Well, you can make hex 1 in from this because you take the OH and one of these H's, you get your double bond there, but you can also take, as well as the OH, one of these H's and that will generate hex 2 in. So your yield's going to be lower because you make hex 1 in and hex 2 in. I'm moving on to the final part of the question about the addition polymers. So we've got to draw a section of polyhex 1 in containing two repeat units. So my top tip for any addition polymer is to make your monomer look like an ethene molecule. So that means the monomer is going to look like this and now it's really easy to turn this into the polymer. So because we need two repeats, we need four carbons in a line. Put your end bonds on. And then all we need to do now is just put all of the atoms groups back on. So we've got this C4H9 group there. The H's here and here. And then we repeat this, C4H9, H's and the rest of the bonds. And that's it. And finally, two other methods of disposing of polymers that can be beneficial to the environment. Well, the first thing you can do is you can burn them, combust them and the energy released can be used to generate electricity. And the other thing you could do is something called feedstock recycling. So basically what they do is they reverse the polymerization process and turn the polymer back into the original monomer and then this can be used as a chemical feedstock in other chemical processes.